azione. Ciao! Sono Elisa e sto andando dai miei per le vacanze. Di che cosa si ciba il clown di Hit? Bambini. Paura. I bambini sono solo un mezzo. Pennywise mangia la loro paura. To good movie. Mark! The first thing I want to talk about, obviously, is a uh, classic horror story, which is, I, lo I loved it to bits. Uh, and it's doing, I think it's doing really well on Netflix so far, no? I've not, I've not read too many reviews, but I think it's doing really well. Yeah, I mean, we, we have bad reviews, we have good reviews, we, uh, it's gotten uh, a buzz, I guess. There's people yeah. watching the film, which is, is enough for us. <laughs> I mean, when I spoke to your, to your directors, Roberto and Paolo, um, The first, I mean, I, I was very, we spoke a lot about the homages, you know, paying a lot of respect and a love letter to old films. But what was more important for them, um, especially for Roberto, I think, was the fact that they really wanted to highlight the fact that Italian cinema, especially Italian horror cinema, was it was just virtually impossible to do. I get the feeling that you feel the same because you, I think you studied the same as me. You studied psychology just in case, no? Because in Italy, being an actor wasn't particularly... The, yeah, so it wasn't what a particular happened, age job to do, no, yeah. Yeah, so what happened is that uh, I did a complete different, uh, like I was raised in a complete different way where school was important and for my mom, university was important. So I never even thought of being an actor. And we don't really have, we have theater courses, but it's not really as, for example, in England or the States where it's a thing. So then after high school, where I did like scientific, um, it's like a scientific high school where you do physics and chemistry. I had no idea what I wanted to do. Uh, my parents were in fashion. My friends were going to law school, to business school, and I had no interest in that. So I, take yeah. a, I took a year off. I went to New York. I started doing a bit of everything to see what I liked. And I did a theater course and a cinema school where I felt like, I never felt that free. And so that was the first thing that basically got me to doing theater and, and cinema. And then I got back to Italy, I started at university and uh, acting was like, kind of like a hobby. Like it was just like, you know, a one night course that I did uh, during the week. And then I started realizing that I didn't really love university as much as I was waiting for that Wednesday night <laughs> for acting exactly. and no, even yeah. though you know th there's a big judgment on acting and doing cinema or theater where it's like when you start out it's always like yeah but what do you do it's like yeah I I'm I'm an actor yeah, yeah but like what else? <laughs> you're a magician but what's the other job that you do during yeah, the day exactly. that's what, yeah <laughs> so there, the, until you really get to do it and then people are really fascinated with it um so it's you know it's it's a challenge you gotta just uh -huh. throw yourself and and do it so i mean having lived through that whole process now of, of realizing that that was what you wanted to do even though in italy it wasn't really accepted as a a, a day job no that must have been a big draw for you when you when this script reached your hands no yes Definitely. I mean, what I love about this, what I loved about the script is that there's so many um, messages <laughs> in this film, and especially uh, the one of, you know, being so hard to make a film, and especially uh, a horror film, uh, a genre film where, you know, I, I, in my career, I've got to play uh, strong roles in especially genre film like Revenge or Rings and um i i have to say i wasn't a big fan of horror i actually really? didn't have what yeah. i didn't quite have like um a cinematic upbringing so the films that i started watching like cult films or classic films are films that i started watching when i started actually hack like acting so I started loving it, but horror came to me <laughs> in a way. Right. And then with Coralie, the director of Revenge, and Javier, the director of Rings, I started having a, you know, um, a culture about genre films and horror films in, in, in general. And I feel like even talking with Coralie and Roberto and Paolo, even France is a, it's like a battle for them to make these type of films. Yeah. So especially Italy, where 
the 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 films that are mostly watched is comedy. <laughs> Uh, I wasn't scared. I loved it, and Roberto and Paolo seemed so passionate about it, and so prepared, and they knew what they wanted, and I was happy to to dive in. It. Uh huh. Speaking of that, I mean, what, what, at the beginning, before you were actually became involved, they both said that they had an idea for someone completely different to you. They had someone. They had the idea of someone that was a lot younger. They didn't really want uh, an actress who had made a kind of a name for herself already in the genre. Because they kind of wanted someone who was younger, who wasn't, who people wouldn't automatically say, "Ah, oh, that's that girl from Revenge" or whatever. So, mm -hmm. what, I mean, how, how, what was the casting process itself? How did it go about? Did they, did you know exactly what they were looking for, and but they let you go with it anyway, or did they say, "We don't really want you," uh, or did you have to really fight for it? So it's, I, I always feel it's so funny the perspective that you then like realize after you've done the film you know what the directors were looking for and what you thought in the casting process because you know even revenge and i am going back to revenge because it's it's funny how these two projects are two genre films two completely different characters where roberto and paulo didn't want the lead of revenge but you know when i met Coralie, for example uh, we've done a lot of, uh, we met at first for a talk. We were just chatting for an hour and a half. And then she asked me to uh, do an audition in her hotel room because she was leaving mm -hmm. for friends that day. So she came, right. she said, please come at like seven o'clock in the morning and do this audition for me. And the character was so different from who I am in person and in my life. And I think she had a doubt about that because she said, can she play you know, meeting me, I don't perceive as that, like, you know, sexual, uh, provocative girl. So she yeah. wanted to see if I could play that. And we did so many castings. She asked me to do self tapes after we auditioned in the hotel room. And after, I think, five self tapes where I put a blonde wig on and I did, did like fake nails and the whole, you know, uh, <laughs> costumes and makeup. She actually called me and she said, listen, I appreciated so much your work. I'm sure we're going to work in the future, but I picked another another girl. Oh, she picked someone else? I didn't know that. All yeah. right. And she was younger. She was younger. She played like very naive, provocative. She never told me who she picked. But then what happened is that in the rehearsals, like they were about to shoot. Basically, a week later, they were going to uh, fly to Morocco and shoot. Uh, the girl decided not to do it anymore. She, mm. they told me she got scared and she didn't feel quite, you know, comfortable because it's, it, it was a strong role. You oh, know? It goes like, a long way. Yeah, yeah, it goes down the back so road, yeah. Then she called me and she's like, hey, can you hop on a plane in two days and come to Paris? So mm -hmm. that's how casting happened for Revenge. And right. it's so, so, like, there's people that have met me and then for some reason, it comes up that I was the girl in Revenge and they're like, no way, like this can't be like, you're so, diff <laughs> you're so different from, you know, what you look like yeah. in the film. So it's funny how Roberto and Paolo say, we didn't want that girl <laughs> from Revenge. Because yeah. sometimes there's that judgment as well, where especially in Italy, I'll say, they cast you for what you are, you know? so. It's always like you've got to prove yourself that you can play different roles and that you can be different people in films and not just yourself. So yeah. I was very happy to hear that because it's like, for me, it's like a proof that I can, you know, do something else. And mm -hmm. even if it's a genre film and, you know, there, there are very, a lot of things in common with the two films in a way, it's still mm -hmm. like a complete different character. And mm -hmm. But how I perceived the casting with Roberto and Paolo was that basically um, this was this is like just a little, you know, um, thing that happened uh, uh. four years ago when I was in the process of I had booked rings and I it was my first year five years ago. Sorry. I was in L.A. I just had moved to L.A. I didn't know anyone. I got a manager and I booked rings and Roberto was like uh emailing me and he was saying hey i have this project and i at the same time i was filming and i get i forgot because then the movie fell apart and and then roberto when we met again and i did a self-tape from la for a classic horror story this was a year ago 
he right. said to me, do you remember me reaching out <laughs> and saying, yeah. and I was younger, you know, I was a complete different person because it was four or five yeah. years ago. So that's how the casting went for me. So, I mean, one, so they, they called you up again to, 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 to try out in the casting just in yeah. case it did work. And obviously it did work. Yeah. Why do you think it did work this time around? Because they were pretty adamant that it was, it was going to be a young girl. I mean, obviously the, there are themes in here about motherhood, for example, which is something that you, you can obviously resonate with, yeah. particularly now. Was that something that you, you really helped you to kind of focus on the themes in the film and maybe one year apart this time? Uh, honestly, it wasn't the thing that attracted me to the project. No. It was not the fact that she was a mother. It was a lot of the things that were in this movie, for example, the fact of how society is today about social media and how everything is filmed more than you really are like concerned about the person that's going through something. That to me was like how Elisa is like reaching out to her mother through the entire film and she's trying to reach her and she's never able to because there's no connection and then at the end where she's finally connected to the world and society she decides to leave it and be on her own that mm -hmm. to me really connected the music was already like the soundtrack was already in the script so the right. two songs that to me I grew up in Italy so for me were two songs that were so you know, they were talking to me in a way. Uh, Il cielo in una stanza is a song that I sing. <laughs> I know this is going to sound weird, but I always sang this song to my uh, boy <laughs> since he's <Okay>. born. <laughs> to put him to sleep. Oh, so it's not a typical I, horror, horror, horror movie. I have changed film, the song, uh, song now after the film. <laughs> it's a complete different song when now. When you show him in 20 years ago, this is what I used to sing to you when you're in the cradle. Exactly. <laughs> And then the other song is a song that my mom used to sing to me when I was a little girl, uh, La oh, Casa. Yeah. So that That's resonated. Crazy. And that was completely happen total coincidence. Like, and, I, and Roberto and Paolo can tell you, these two songs were in the script. So, you know, I, mm -hmm. I knew from the start, like that, you know, really talked to me. And then Roberto and Paolo, meeting Roberto and Paolo, I had seen their projects. Um, so I had seen The Nest that Roberto directed. Yeah. which is brilliant film and uh, Roberto's short films because he's super young so he had done short films this mm. is his first long feature and I loved their projects so that the combination of things really you know attracted me to the project yeah. I mean you mentioned that a difference in age between the directors was that something that you could that made a difference in when it came to to, to acting with two different directors not just two co-directors but two that were I mean, I think Roberto is almost my age. He's about 40, you know, and there's about 12 years difference yeah. between them. No? Did, that, did you notice a difference there in terms of acting for two directors? Very, not completely different age range, but quite a difference in age. It was my, uh, to be honest, it was my biggest concern when I decided to do the project. I asked my agent, why is this happening? Like, why are the two directors? Because they had never worked uh, they never worked before together. Yeah. So I said, like, why is this happening? And then they basically told me that they have this like passion for horror films and they've known each other forever. And seeing them together, when I met them, it didn't give me an idea that that was going to be a problem. So yeah. I didn't know anyways what was going to happen. And I have to say, I was very surprised because on set they were so balanced. And one would come and give... Uh, the actor's directions and then the other one would think about you know camera movements and like the more like technical part of the film and then they would switch and but it was so natural that it never was a problem on set uh -huh. and also in terms of the, the the actual script itself I believe it changed quite a bit once Netflix became involved because they wanted it to be more grounded in something in in kind of it Italy's history because <laughs> È la leggenda di Osso Mastrosa Carcagnosso. La gente moriva di fame e loro promisero di salvarli. Ma non sa mai niente per niente. I think that when we met, when I uh, was in the casting process, the script that I got was already uh, the reviewed uh, script 
Uh, I know it'll be reviewed by Netflix. Yeah. So right. I never saw the actual script before. Um, mm -hmm. So I actually found out these things later. Um, and I didn't know about the legend of uh, it was something that I discovered actually um, when I read the script. Uh, and then they told me all about it because they had done a lot of research. So they are masters at that right now. <laughs> a lot of research. <laughs> they told me a lot yeah. of things the other day. Yeah. Uh -huh. So that's, that's something that I discovered with you know the film and the script. Mm -hmm. And then I want to obviously sp speak about the, uh, it's obviously, it's a very self-aware film about, it doesn't pretend that it's not trying to, to pay homage to so many different kind of films from the past. Did they specifically ask you to go and revisit any, any specific films to get a kind of into the vibe of the kind of thing they were looking for? Did you, did you ask them what kind of vibes they were looking for? Uh, I mean, I, we did. We did talk a lot about uh, references and what they had in mind and especially music. I remember, uh, I remember them asking me um, if I could give them a playlist of music that I thought uh, specifically for like the most important scene for Ediza. So we did that kind of thing. With, we played a lot with music and we, I, I basically told them my feelings musically, um, uh -huh. what I had in so, mind. Can I ask you what kind of, what kind of music you, you gave them to? Uh... I mean, I don't know if it's all Italian songs that I've never heard of, but what, can you kind of no, it's, it's, explain it's the not, process a little bit? It's more like instrumental. It's more instrumental. Uh, instrumental stuff. Than okay. Yeah. So it was like more about like, for example, one that I remember, it's, it's a year ago, so I don't remember exactly which ones, yeah. but I remember putting the soundtrack for Amelie. Um, what else? Hmm. I remember that was like a big thing for me. Mm -hmm. But it was, it was mainly kind of sound, soundtracks from, from other films that you've seen and things like that, no? Yeah, and just like instrumental. So it was like pianos and uh, violins and not like really popular songs. Right. Uh, uh -huh. And then we talked about references. I mean, uh, you can tell from the film, <laughs> watching the film, that there's a lot of, you know, homage to uh, classics and con uh, contemporary uh, horror films. But one mm. that I had loved was uh, Midsummer, So right. for me, it was like, I don't know. I, and, and the fact that they did compare in a few tweets and, you know, um, Instagram posts, the fact that they had like discovered that without us saying it. I yeah. mean, to me, it was, you know, and some people say, no, Midsummer is so much better. And <laughs> I mean, that's opinions, but I, I yeah. love that. And I mean, I mean, your film, it doesn't go to, to, it's not trying to copy any film. It's just paying, it's like a love letter to all those films whilst telling exactly. its own tale. No, yeah, yeah. exactly. Uh -huh. yeah. I mean, so, I mean, we're running out of time. So I want to talk a little bit. I mean, obviously you, you've done some work in France. I know you did the series that I can't wait to see. I don't know where I can see it. Um, what was it called in English? No, I it, no, it came out in France. Um, it came out in France already. No, they were 10. No, it's called, yeah. I don't think it's come out anywhere else yet, no? Uh, I'm not sure, honestly. I don't know. I've seen a trailer. It looks, it looks great. Yeah. Yeah, no, it was a great experience. I mean, Pascal Leger is an amazing director as well. Yeah. And it's a completely different character where I speak French in, in the series. Yeah. So, um, um, but did you, speak, did you speak French before you went over there? So uh, I did study French in school. And it obviously right. was like a basic French. And then when I uh, shot Revenge, I was in Morocco with half of the crew from Morocco and France. So everyone mm. spoke French, uh, yeah. not everyone spoke English. So I just like started picking it up. And then uh -huh. uh, the series came about and I got a coach and I started studying the script. And, and now I'm, I'm fluent because then I worked with uh, Michel Azanavichus for his next film. So yeah. and there I speak French and it was like a complete cast and director and crew in French. So I, I guess now I just, I just speak French. Mm -hmm. I, I'm, I'm glad you mentioned Michel. I mean, I imagine you can't speak very much about it, but I mean, One Cut of the Dead is one of my favorite films from the last few years. So I, I, that, that must have been a great, I mean, did you have to go through casting for that as well? Or did you just get a call and yeah. say we, we, you, had a, you went to casting as well? Yes, 
Yeah. Uh, was there any specific reason why you went for this remake? Because I mean, for me, it was, it was just a perfect movie to show the, kind of the behind the scenes of what goes on in a horror movie. Right? I mean, I, I love the way. I love uh, when Michel reached out. Um, he sent me the script and he sent me the 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 film. I have to be honest; I didn't know about the film before. Right. Uh, and then when I watched it, I was just laughing so yeah. much, and I thought it was genius. And you know, the fact that I'm I'm not honestly a like a fan of remakes specifically, but working with Michelle and working in a country where I mean I love their cinema and Michelle specifically he was a director that I wanted to work with and the cast was amazing it's all actors that I really really love and the script is great and it's a complete different take I would say a different take yeah the I feel in a way the humor the French humor is completely different from the oh, humor yeah. that I can cut of the dead so, yeah, yeah. so you know i don't know and until you see the film and until you get to press and it's so hard every time to see myself in a film <laughs> then you, you don't like to watch it no i mean it's it's hard to have an objective point of view when you were in it and you know everything that you know went through that happened during shooting and before shooting and what was just off and camera really while hard. you were doing those things and all those kind yeah. of things no, yeah yeah Mm -hmm. So, and I tend not to watch myself when I'm shooting, um, unless I have to for some reason. So I don't know what to expect. And I had no expectations for revenge. I had no expectations for a classic horror story for none of the films or series that I've done. So I have no idea what's, what's going to be well, Every like. time you have no expectations, it's usually, usually, uh, it's usually a success. <laughs> I don't Fingers know. Crossed. Hopefully. No, I'm sure it's going to be fine. No, no, I mean, I mean, One Cut of the Dead is fantastic. I loved it. So I imagine it's, uh, if it's anything anywhere near as good as the original, it'd be fantastic. But listen, Matilda, yeah. thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate it. Uh, I thank wish you the best of luck with uh, this film. It's on Netflix now. And I hopefully get to speak to you sometime soon about this remake. Yeah. Which I'd love to see. Yeah, yeah when it All comes right. out, I would love to. Okay. That's great. All right. Well, thank you so much for your time. You. Enjoy yourself and uh, take care. Thank you. You too. Tu sei la più preziosa qui.